Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beer. The first of four graded stakes races at Aqueduct on Saturday is race number four for juvenile fillies going nine furlongs. It's the grade two demoiselle. You can bet it with a new DRF Bets account. Sign up at bets.drf.com. Receive a 300% deposit match. Here's the field for the grade two demoiselle. Seven expected to meet the starter. The number one enliven, the six to five morning line favorite. One of several fillies in this race with a powerful pedigree punch. Enliven is out of it's tricky. You won three grade one races going long, was a millionaire, and, and Liven is a half to entice. A grade two stakes winner going two turns as a two year old, and I believe was second in the Wood Memorial before going yeah. on the shelf. What did you think of Enliven's most recent performance in the grade three Tempted? It was a race which came back very, very fast. It was also a race won by a million to one shot. Yeah, it's interesting. It'll be interesting to see what she does in this race because, based off of her Tempted and the figure that that race got, she really stands out in this race. Like, she's going to be really, really hard to beat. If I'm being honest, Dan, I don't particularly love any of her races. I think she's okay. I don't think she's that good, though. Um, and the Tempton, uh, the Tempton's a real problem for me because she got a really good trip in that race. Um, and listen, maybe the horse that ran her down in their Oxy Lady is going to turn out to be really good. The figure suggests that she is. I want to see some confirmation. As you mentioned, that horse was a huge price and live and had a, had a perfect trip in there, took that race over, was no match for that horse in the final eighth of a mile, didn't really finish that strongly in that race. And um, I just want to see some confirmation for that race. We've seen two horses run back out of that race, including one that ran today at Aqueduct. Neither one of them ran well at all. Especially since you're going to get a short price yeah. on in live. And you're six to five on the morning line. It might even be slightly shorter come post time. The time form U.S. pace projector intrigues me for this race. I'm going to be curious to see how Joe Bravo handles the break. Advantageous inside post going a mile and an eighth at Aqueduct. And live and doesn't seem like a burner to me. No. But I think Joe's going to break and try to establish position if someone else wants the lead, I think you'll be happy to let them have it, but I think as of right now, I agree with this. Yeah, I agree with that too. I think they should come out of there running. Um, and listen, maybe, she, maybe she'll maybe she make the lead and maybe she won't. She doesn't need it, as you point out, but I don't think it would be a bad idea for Bravo to try and take the front as they head to the first turn. The second choice on the morning line is on the far outside. That's the number seven, Molto Bella. The damn Dr. Zick was a grade one stakes winning sprinter, and she's already foaled a very useful New York bred named Take Charge Aubrey, who is stakes place going long, although I kind of like her at slightly shorter distances. This will be Molto Bella's first start around two turns, but she ran well in her first route race, a one-turn mile last time out. If this pace heats up, I could see her rallying late. I can see that, too. I mean, I guess she ran fine last time. I thought she got a, a overall a really nice trip in that race, and just no match for that Baffert horse, Mother Mother, who sort of cut the pace. It seemed like a pretty solid pace to me. This horse ran fine. Um, I'm really concerned about her stretching out. I wonder how far she really wants to go. As you mentioned, the pedigree is really more for shorter on the dam side. Um, the pedigree isn't really there for her to go this far, and she's a relatively short price. This is a horse I don't want to really use anyway. The number three, Philly Joel, we see close to the pace on the time form U.S. pace projector, and while she is yet to go two turns, it's worth noting that she really improved by leaps and bounds in her first route effort. That was her most recent start, a maiden special weight at Belmont, where she sat close to the pace, and then just exploded to win by at 13 to yeah. one. This is a Philly by dialed in, who I think is going to handle the distance, no sweat. Yeah, I agree with that. I think she she did improve stretching out. Um, the only thing that sort of held me back from really putting her higher in my picks is she beat a very yeah. bad field in that way. I mean, there was really nothing in there. I like the way she did it, though, Dan. She showed good tactical speed. She just sat right up there, tracking the pace three wide, and she just left that field behind the stretch. That was a big step forward last time. The number five is Jennifer's Dream. This is a filly by Medallia Dioro. We know how many sensational fillies Medallia Dioro yeah. has sired over the years. The damn joyful victory was a millionaire and a grade one stakes winner going long. So maybe Jennifer's Dream's just been waiting to go two turns. I thought it was an okay debut. I found it interesting that John service put blinkers on after the win in the second lifetime start and maybe she moved a little bit early that day I was kind of disappointed me she too. blew that big late lead yeah me too I, I think she's run okay in both of her starts but I don't think she, she just didn't do anything in either of those races that make me want to play her back in this race I'm with you um, I see the way to look at that race and think maybe they won a little too soon, but she should have won last time, and that really bothered me. Paired up 58, she's really got to step forward. Distance won't be an issue, I don't believe, for the four positive spirit, one of only two fillies in this race to have already raced around two turns. She is a half-sister to Kentucky Derby winner, always dreaming. And I'm interested in your take of the most recent race. They cut her back to a one-turn mile at Churchill Downs, and boy, they went slow on the lead. She was up close. Yeah. I thought she finished it off, though, in really professional fashion, like a filly that wants more ground. 
around. That's how I looked at her too. I know that they turned her back to win last time, and she just got such a perfect trip in there. They were walking on the lead. She sat right up close. She took it over, um, and she scored. I actually like her race two back better. The race at Keeneland around two turns, where she did not get a very good trip in that race, wide the entire way. I thought Castellano went way too soon in that race and took it over, and she got closed down at the end. But I thought she ran better two back than she did breaking her maiden last time. Can you see Manny Franco getting real aggressive out of the gate? Mm. Because we know she has a little bit of speed. Yes, she was close to a yeah. really glacial pace last time out, but maybe Manny decides to go and then try to get a breather and use this horse's stamina early on the far turn. It, it'll be interesting to see how he rides her. I, I would like him, I just want him to get a spot somewhere going forward. I don't want them to take her all the way right. back in this race, but she doesn't need to be on the lead. The two long shots in this field, the two, Girl of Toscanova, the six of Fleet Destiny, both coming off solid performances. Girl of Toscanova is a full sister to a stakes place New York bred named Our Supernova. Could be a nice claim for Charlie Baker. Yeah. Took this one for 50. She ran okay in her first start against winners. The winner of that race came back to win a little stakes race, but this is a big ask. Buyer's a bit slow, trying yeah. to go two turns, not sure about the distance. Yeah, and stepping way up in class. I mean, this isn't the strongest demoiselle you've ever seen, but this horse stepping way up. Um, she won easily first time out in the slot, but in slow time. Um, the horse that beat her last time, as you mentioned, South of France, she's won three in a row. She won an off-the-turf stakes race here last week. Um, but all those races with sort of lower figures, this horse has to step it up. A Fleet Destiny's connections know something about scoring at a big price. Discreet lover in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. This filly did handle the stretch out to two turns last time out at Parks. Has a tactical gear. Didn't think much of the field she beat last nope, time. I didn't either, but she did handle two turns. She improved with the stretch out picks up Irad for this race. Nothing wrong with that. This horse has to improve, but a long shot, they could get a piece of this. Let's take a look at our top picks for the grade two Demoiselle Stakes. I'm just hoping that Andy was right with that fig last time out, because yep. if Enliven runs close to that 86 buyer, she's supposed to win. She's got enough tactical speed to be forward, if not outright on the lead. I'll be interesting to see if she gets the mile and an eighth. I mean, it's tricky, was able to do it, but we kind of liked her a little more to mile and a sixteenth yeah. than a mile and an eighth. And Tyst, if unfortunately got injured, we really couldn't find out what she could do. But I, I think Enliven's going to control this or be in prime position turning into the stretch. You like positive spirit, and you're getting six to one on the line. Yeah, I just like her more, you know, stretching back out. I know the distance is a real question for just about everybody in here, but I liked her two turn race better than her one turn race. So I'm hoping that that projects well into a race like this. Listen, it's hard to be way against Alive, and yeah. um, even if you don't believe in that la that last race, because this field just isn't strong, and she's better than these horses, basically off of each of her last two races. It's hard to stand strongly against her. I got to use her, but try and beat her a little bit with this horse. Four one seven three for Mike. One seven three six for me in the Grade Two Demoiselle Stakes. One of four graded at Aqueduct on Saturday. Bet him with a DRF Bets account. Easy sign up at bets.drf.com. You immediately receive a three hundred percent deposit match and approximate post time for the Demoiselle 102 Eastern, best of luck.